Would you stand to receive the family? Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. For the mountains were brought forth wherever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turned man to destruction and you say, return, O children of men. For a thousand years are in your sight. Or like yesterday when it has passed. And like a watch in the night. Carry them away with a flood. They are like a sheep. In the morning. They are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up. And in the evening it is cut down and withers. 
For we are consumed by your anger and your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before us our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed. Our days have passed away in your wrath. And we finish our years like a sigh. The days of our years are 70 years. And if by reason of strength they be 80, Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Question is asked, who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. statement is made, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long and have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy. that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. So God, make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust, and surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. From the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. And only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who, who is your refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set your love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I shall answer him. 
and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him, and with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, but if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Thomas asked the question and said, Lord, where are you going? How can we know the way? Jesus said, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come to the Father except he come through me. David's writing of the 27th division of Psalms declared, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war will rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. He shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted above me, above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. So hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. For you said, when you seek my face, my heart said to you, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face far from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and such has breathed out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So David's declaration says to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend? into the heel of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place. He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. 
This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Selah. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lift you up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Selah. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May be seated.
My brothers and sisters, we've gathered here today to celebrate the life, one that God has called from labor to reward, the personality of Miss Terrica Williams. Family has put together an order of service that we will follow as written. We will have a selection from the Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church Choir. Old Testament scripture will be coming from Pastor Yvette Norris. New Testament scripture coming from Apostle Thomas Norris. Prayer will also be given by Apostle Thomas Norris. Then there will be a series of remarks following that prayer. Pastor Herbert Edwards, Representative Watkins Garrett and Woods Mortuary will come. Following Pastor Edwards, there will be Carolina High School class of 2004. Recognizing Ms. Candace Jenkins, Mrs. Bobby Chapman, Mrs. Denisha Fuller, Mrs. Vaughn Carter, and Ms. Cassandra Fleming. Then there'll be Landmark Financial Services of Hinesville, Georgia. Ms. Trisha Johnson will represent them. Following the series of remarks, there will be another selection coming from Mr. Willie Marty Williams, Terrica's uncle. And then our words of comfort will come from the very capable pastor, Pastor Vincent Mitchell. Following the words of comfort, there will be another selection from Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church Choir. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. Let us follow the outline that the family has put together for us as we celebrate the life of Terrica. I leave you by saying, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal.
Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I give glory and honor to the Almighty God who is the head of my life. I give honor to the Williams family. I was blessed and I was honored to know Terrica as a co-worker and as a friend. And she is one that touched the lives, not only of myself, but I'm sure she touched the lives of everyone that was in here. And this, for this right now, I just wanna say to the family that Terrica was a true woman of God. She loved the Lord. She impacted the people that she came in contact with. She's gone, but she will be never forgotten. And I shall come to you from Psalms 121, yeah. verse 1 through 3. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, will not slumber. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the reading of God's word. New Testament, Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman at the well, but today he's talking to us. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection yes. and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Though he were dead, yet should he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me should never die. Should never die. Should never die. He that believeth in him should never die. And then Jesus said, Believe it thou this. Believe this. Believe this. Amen. And that reading comes from John chapter 11, verse 25. Amen. We want to pray right now. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, Come into this place today, Holy Spirit, and have your way. Do what only you can do. We lift the day, Father God, the heavy burdens. Lift the distress, Father God, that is in the lives of your people. And God, we ask you to move in a mighty way. Oh, Father God, we ask you to change our tears of joy, our tears of sadness to tears of joy. Oh, God, help us to celebrate, Father God, today. Oh, God, help us to celebrate, God, not the way that she died, but the way that she lived. Oh, God, help us to remember the smile that she had and, and the laugh that she had and the words that she spoke to us, Lord God. And God, you have used her to impact our lives. And for that alone, God, we say thank you. Father, we pray for this family today, Father God. And we ask you, God, today to fill them with joy. Oh, God, let them know, God, that thy presence are even right now, even close unto them. Oh, God, you are so worthy still to be praised. 
Now, God, we ask that you would bless the speaker of the hour today. Oh, God, use him in a mighty way. Anoint him, God, to speak your words of life unto us. Oh, God, pour, God, thy presence into us, God, today. And, God, we ask you, God, to strip in thy heart today. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we do ask you. And let the people of God say amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. God bless you on today, Pastor Gray, Pastor Mitchell, wonderful family. It gags me to give reflections, and that's something sometimes hard for me to do when it's someone that is close to you. Terrica came to us in 2018. She was mortuary school and stopped by and in that little itty bitty voice that she had said, I want to I wanna work with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I started asking her questions and one of the greatest, one of the best answers that she gave me, I said, what high school you go to? Carolina. I said, well, you in. <laughs> But she was a dear heart. She had a smile that would light up a room and a personality that could adhere to any situation uh, around here. I'm going to ask the Watkins, Garrett, and Woods family, if you would stand. I'm not going to call you staff, but those who are here today, if you would please stand. Thank you. I didn't call them staff because we are a family. You're looking at a group of people on Monday. We can cuss each other out from one end of this building to the other. Next day, we're eating lunch like nothing ever happened. And she fit right in with us in all of it. And as I was coming down the road, I said, Lord, what, what can I say about Tara? Because we're hurting. All of us are hurting. And the only thing that could come to my mind was thank you. Thank you, Lord, for lending her to us. Thank you, Lord, for the season that she was with us. Thank you, Lord, for the memories that we will share about her long after this day is gone. And I leave with you this poem. It says, there are no tears in heaven, no grief of any kind. I leave this final teardrop to those I left behind. Though I'm absent from the body, I'm present with the Lord. The joy of my salvation is now my full reward. Even though we are looking at her as pretty as she is laying in this casket today, we do know where her spirit and our soul in is. And in this, I rejoice. And as I sit, can you just clap your hands and rejoice because we know where she is at today. God bless you. Sharing memories of Terica on behalf of those who stand beside me. Today we gather because we were connected to a beautiful person who was a child of God, a daughter, a sister, a mother, a sister in law, a granddaughter and goddaughter, a niece, an aunt, a cousin, co worker, a friend. These were the roles in which Terica naturally served. Terrica and Bobby attended elementary school, then formed a connection at Carolina High during the eighth, ninth grade. They continued their friendship into adulthood, bonding over their children and life. Terrica always expressed a positive energy and light. She had a great sense of humor, so they laughed often, 
which helped them through tough situations. Bobby, Bobby fondly remembers Terika giving Talia's baby bassinet to use for her son along with advice from being a new mom. That's how Terika was, so generous, inspiring, and offering wisdom. Many times her advice was preceded with the words, my mama always told me. And Bobby knew those were wise words from Miss Joanne. For Vaughn and Cassandra, the twins, shared it was challenging to limit Terika to a single memory. So they reflect on what she meant to them. Terika was their comic relief, sometimes their referee, a voice of reason, and the epitome of love. In middle school, they stayed overnight at each other's house often. During those times, they would daydream about who they would become and the children they would have. Today, they smile because they became everything once imagined and birthed beautiful children. Nisha shared a time in high school when she sat on the front row to support Terika and other friends who were in the pageant. When Terika approached her, she came to sit down with a smile on her face. Yeah, the smile that no one could ever forget. As Nisha was putting Vaseline on her lips, Terika leaned over to her and said, Denisha, I researched where people in professional pageants put Vaseline on their teeth so they can keep smiling throughout the pageant. <laughs> the look on Nisha's face should have said it all, thinking Terika was implying to use her Vaseline to test this theory. Since Terika was still smiling, she had to ask, Please tell me you didn't put Vaseline on your teeth. And if you did, how much did you put on? Because you haven't stopped smiling since you came this way. But hey, whatever, sis, whatever helps you win, sis. To conclude, Terika and I were close friends since middle school. And in the ninth grade, found out we share a bloodline as second cousins. We reconnected in 2020 as she was put just completing the funeral services program, and I was beginning. I looked to her for advice and admired Terika's character. She was smart, beautiful, disciplined, determined, and loved by many. We were connected as friends, connected in faith, and will one day be connected in heaven. One of our last conversations was a prayer for one another about God's covering. Mm -hmm. So to the family, friends, and community, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26 in the NIV. These are our reflections of a life and legacy treasure. And the class of 2004 will provide a monetary gift for the girls. Trisha Johnson. I'm with Landmark Financial Services. This is obviously very tough for us at this time. I have with me Stephanie Smith, who was Terrica's direct manager. 
I'm, I'm the assistant vice president, so Stephanie works directly for me. To the family of Carica. We won't speak of her in past tense. She, con she continues to live on. To Stephanie. I'm so thankful for your courage. In trying to save Terrica. Please forgive me for just a moment to get through this. I ask for you to pray for the spirit to be with me to get through this. Erica worked for Landmark for a short period of time. It's not very often that contingent or temporary employees <clears throat> set an impression with me. Sometimes it's not very often that um, new employees set an impression with me. Erica was different in a very short period of time. I interviewed with, with Terrica because Stephanie believed in her so much. So just to kind of give you a, a little very quick backstory, I cover 10 offices between Florida and Southeast Georgia. And Stephanie called me and said, I need you to, I need you to interview Terry. She's different. She's absolutely different. So normally when, when someone hires on with us, they hire in as an entry level. As you can see in the program, Terry made such an impression that she was going to be hired on as a branch manager trainee. If that doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what does. Terry's not gone. Then Mark will always, always remember Terry. There's, there's a lot that is going on right now to, to make sure that we continue to, to have Terry along with us at Lindmark Financial Services. Miss Joanne. And to her family in the 30 days she worked with us. We're not speaking of love in the past tense. We love Terry and we always will. And we thank you for this opportunity. to get through this. I remember, uh, I'm going to say a couple of words and then I'm going to sing this song and try to get out from up here before I fall apart. I think I was maybe 18 years old when Terrica was born. And all I could think about all the time, I said, God, this girl is crying every day, God. She's, she's, every time I turn around, she's crying, just crying, crying. And she just wanted some attention. She, I, you know, I pick her up and I hold her, and I say, "God, lady, just be quiet for a little while." And I don't think she stopped talking 
been running her mouth all her life. She would call me sometimes and say, Uncle Marty, I, I, I need you to do something for me. I, I got a stereo I need you to put in my car for me. Would you, would, would you look at it? And I put it in there. And I said, oh, lady, you, you ain't offer your uncle a dollar or nothing, did you? You just, but, you know, I didn't care. You know, I just wanted time with her, you know. And uh, she came by my apartment one time some years ago and she had a laptop and I was downloading music on it for her. Why are you putting all this old stuff on my computer? Why? I don't want to listen to that. I said, well, I do. He said, well, you bring it over here and leave it. I'm going to listen to it. So, but she would always, I think she was the first niece that I've had in my life that always just looked up at me and his big old eyes and Uncle Marty, Uncle Marty, Uncle Marty. I, God, I'm going to have to change my name after a while. You know, but I love her. I'm going to miss her. Um, I have fond, fond memory, memories of her. And um, I'll cherish her for the rest of my life. And with that being said, one of these mornings, it won't be long. You look for me, and I'll be gone. I'm going to a place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll have nothing to do but just walk around. When I get to heaven, I'll sing and shout. No one will be able to put, put me My father yes, will be waiting, yes, God. and my knees too will walk around heaven all day. The Sabbath will have no way. We'll do nothing but rejoice and sing, Lord, Lord, we'll pray. And when he says, well done, my child, your race has been won. said we'll walk around heavy all day.
Let the church say amen. amen. Can we put our hands together and encourage this family? Amen. And now give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy to be praised. Even in a situation like this, God is worthy to be praised. I think we would declare that all of us are hurt. We want to acknowledge our presider, Pastor Gray. Would you give him a great big hand? Bless God for him. For all of the preachers or ministers, and if you will, any ministers that may be in the audience, pastors or elders or bishops, Apostles, would you all please stand as well? All preachers and pastors, ministers who are in the house this evening, would you stand? Would you give all of them a great big hand? Amen. Your presence makes a difference to this loving family. Bless God for you and we will continue to have you in our prayers in the days ahead. Well, if you will, to pray with us. I'm trying to get through this myself, and I know I should be better than this, but we will pray with us. God, we bless you. We honor you. We give you praise. We ask, oh God, that you will look down upon us now. Caress where caress needs to happen. Wrap your arms around somebody who needs you now more than they ever needed you before. I ask you to strengthen me, oh God. That I may say what you won't say. Anoint us afresh from the crown of our head down to the sole of our feet. God will be ever so careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. And all the people of God said amen and amen. Just for a brief moment, I don't want to hold you long promise we won't be here long. I did do two things. I talked to the Lord and I said, well, Lord, give me a five-minute sermon and give me a 55-minute sermon. And the five-minute will be predicated on whether they say amen or not. 55 mean you're not getting it, so I'll keep going when we get to minute number six. Y'all say amen, we're going to cut it off. But I think that Terrica was one who would light up any room that she walked in. No doubt about it. She always carried herself gracefully. We are just blessed people to have crossed her path. God blessed her, blessed us with her presence. I think she was a gift to this earth and to those of us who met her. I want to lift a portion of scripture in Psalm 46 and verse number 1 brevity of time and it says God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble I really don't want to put a title to this message but if I were to I talk about confident 
in Christ. Confident in Christ. We're gathered here today, my brothers and sisters, in this homegoing service this evening for Sister Terrica Williams. And I don't know about anybody else, a homegoing service is a celebration uh, for the saints of God. We can celebrate when we know that a person is transitioning from labor to reward and from earth to glory. The Bible reminds us that we ought to uh, cry when they come in and rejoice when they go out. We, we've almost gotten it backwards. We go to crying at the end when we ought to be rejoicing in knowing that they made it in. Amen. On behalf of this Wilkes family and Williams family, we'd like to thank all of those of you who have gathered here today, to the family members who are here, to the church family who's here, co-workers and friends. Uh, today is a very difficult day for all of us. Each of your presence will help this family uh, more than you ever know. I thank God for Terrica really do. I thank him. Uh, Terrica had such a joy about her. Many of you who stood and spoke on her behalf today, uh, you reminded of us of her smile. She kept a smile on her face. Every time you saw her, uh, she had a smile on her face. I never knew a time when she wasn't willing to help out wherever she could. She was a person who didn't mind helping out. She went from just helping out in our youth department at Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church to becoming the director of our youth department. And what she done in the youth department was cause the bar to be raised so high that any person that were following her would have a hard time keeping the bar up that high. Her smile was very inviting. If you knew her, you knew that not only did she have a great smile, but Terrica was one of the most talented persons you could ever want to meet. She was one of the smartest persons that I've met in a long time. Y'all going to talk back to me here? She was talented, and she was a person who spreaded her joy wherever she went. And I remember when she came to me, she said, Pastor, I, I'm going to mortician school and I'm going to learn mortician and learn how to work with people. And I said, well, that's good. And, and uh, she said, I'm going down and do some internship at uh, the mortuary at Watkins with Doug Garrett and his crew. And my reply was, well, you be careful when you go down there. Uh, there's a whole lot of people there that are stretched out. I said, you be careful when you go down there because uh, it's a scary place. <laughs> I, I said to her, be careful when you go there because it's a frightening place. <laughs> and she said, Pastor, I can't wait to get there because when I get there, I'm planning on learning how to embalm people. <laughs> I thought to myself, what in the world is wrong with her? Let me help her before she get too far involved with this. But she was so excited about her contribution to life and contribution to helping others. I wish I had a witness here. She, she said, Pastor, I've wanted to do this ever since I was a little girl. I wanted to go to the mortuary and work. And I was thinking to myself, as a little boy, I always wanted to stay away from a place like this. Mm. All right. Always wanted to get away from a place like this. Right. Terrica was a very loving person. Loved her family, loved her girls. Her girls were very important to her. She had put her faith in her God. She had a relationship with the master. I think before we leave this earth, we ought to make sure we have a relationship with the master. You can leave earth without a lot of things, but you ought not to leave this place without a relationship with the master. This, this particular psalm 
before y'all charge me with gross misinterpretation of the Bible, this particular psalm, Psalm 46 and verse 1, reminds me so much of Terica. Because if she was able to speak to us today, I think her words would be, God is our refuge and strength. I believe that the psalmist, uh, uh, this particular psalm is accredited to the sons of Korah. And the uh -huh. psalmist discovered something about God. He discovered that uh, God is. And I like those two words right there. I believe we could just preach all day long about God is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two words that mean a whole lot. He didn't get to his real subject, but when I read Psalm 46 and verse 1, and it was enough for me to hear God is. It's like reading Genesis chapter number one. It said in the beginning, God, you don't have to go any farther than that because you understand there was nothing before him and he created everything that you see after him. And then the psalmist here picks me up and says, listen here, God is. He's making a powerful de declaration. That you remember Moses, don't you? Moses yeah. one day asked God, well, God, who are you, God? And if you want me to go tell people about you and tell them what you can do. Who shall I tell them sent me God? And you remember God's reply to Moses in Exodus chapter number 3 and verse 14. Moses said, God said to Moses, Moses go tell them that I am have sent you. Amen. And when he said I am, God is saying to us, I am exactly what you need. I am what you need. I am your comfort if you need comforting. I am protection if you need protection. I am says I will be what I will be. I thank God that God will be what he will be because somebody want to know what will God be. God said I'll be a friend that you're friendly. I will be. I will be a God if you need a God. I will be. I'll be a helper if you need some help. I will be. I'll be a healer. God saying I'll be whatever you need me to be. I'll be a deliverer if you need me to be. I will be. Somebody in here have already this discover that God has already been what you need him to be and he declared when you stood up and said I need somebody to help me he said I will be sometimes we just need to find out that our God is waiting for us to call on his name he's waiting for us to reach out our hand and let us know I will be because some people are wondering today how we're going to make it from this point on God said I will be what you going to be God I'll be the one that will walk with you and talk with you and hold your hand and strengthen you and I thank God for this particular song because God was declaring that I am who I am and when God says I am who I am he's saying to us no matter when or where he is there God says I want you to know that my presence will always be with you amen no matter what we are uh, going through in this life no matter how compromising our position becomes uh, amen or what position we find ourselves in God always have a way out for us yeah. uh, can I get a witness in here anybody in here know that you can count on your God to help you get out of whatever you are in and that's why the psalmist can shout real loud today and let us know he is our refuge he is our safety he is our shelter and in God there is safety and there's shelter somebody in here know sometime I just need some shelter with this crazy world that we are living in right now I need a place I can run into and find some refuge I need a place to run into and find out that I'm just as safe as I need to be. Amen. The safest place we can be is in the arms of our God and in the presence of our God. I wish I had a Holy Ghost witness in here. I I'm almost finished here. I got to hear up and get out of here. Amen. God is trying to get us to see that the presence of the Lord is with us even when it doesn't feel like it or look like it. And sometimes it just don't feel like God with me. It's Sometimes it don't feel like God walking with me. Sometimes things get real quiet and I'm wondering what's going on God? You're not talking to me. You're not even a coming by and seeing about me. I'm in all this trouble God. Things are falling apart God and where are you God? But God said I want
want you to know that I'll never leave you nor would I forsake you. I'm right there with you. I'm walking with you and talking with you. Amen. That's the kind of God that we serve. There, there's a whole lot of things that threaten us that causes us uh, sometimes to lose our hope or lose our trust in our God. But Terica never lost her trust in her God. There's a whole lot of people that let her down in her life but she said I can trust in the Lord and I hear Solomon saying in Proverbs trust in the Lord with all thine heart lean not to your own understanding in all your way acknowledge him and he will direct thy path our God our God want us to know that his presence and his protection will always be with us. Amen. In other words, I wouldn't be able to be standing where I am right now if God were not right there with me. I wouldn't, you wouldn't be sitting in the seat that you're in right now if God had not been with you. Amen. Y'all looking at me like you ain't never had no trouble in your life. Like you ain't never had to cry sometime. Like you ain't never woke up and wondering what kind of food you were going to put on your table didn't have no money in your pocket and God made sure that you made it in a house and you didn't make it because how cute you were you made it because your God's presence was right there his power was there his protection was there and that's the kind of God we serve yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, Mitchell. Talk about oh God 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 letting us know today that not only is my presence and my protection with you, uh -huh. but whatever you need, whatever. I have exactly what you need. Yes. Yes. And I look at this world as I say, all the trouble that's around us, trouble on the job, trouble at the house, trouble with the spouse, and trouble in the streets. <laughs> Amen. Like the songwriter used to rap it back in the day, makes me wonder sometimes. Yeah. How I keep from going under. I got an answer for you. I can tell you why you haven't gone under. You haven't gone under because there's a God who's always waiting to pick you up. You haven't gone under because there's a God who's always waiting to hold your hand. You have a God who says when you get too weak to hold yourself up, just lean on me. I don't know about you, but I believe that Terica was leaning on the Lord. She leaned so much that she said, God, I got to lean because I don't have any protection and I need you to protect me. Somebody said, I wish I was there so I could protect you. But God says, sometimes my protection is not like your protection. Because what I'm getting ready to do, you cannot do. Can I get a witness here? Our God is able to protect us uh, and give us power. How do you know he can protect you, Mitchell? Because he says, I am a very present help in the time of trouble. And sometimes I have to take note uh, in what God has done. And when I look back over my life uh, and see what the Lord has brought me through, uh, my soul cries out hallelujah and I have to say thank you Lord can I get a witness the psalmist breaks out in a praise and when he praised God he reminded God of what he'd already done and I hear God saying I heard you praising me but every now and then in like verse 10 God said be still, be still and know uh, that I am God. Uh, in other words, uh, he's saying don't try to fix it uh, yourself. Uh, be still. Uh, don't try to work it out uh, yourself. Uh, be still. Uh, and I know uh, that God got you. Uh, family, uh, I just stopped by. On my way to heaven to tell you, keep your confidence in your God. God died.
got you. He's going to lift you up. He's going to dry all your tears. I heard him say in Revelation, one of these days, every tear shall be wiped from your eyes. Tears of pain shall be wiped from your eyes. Tears of disappointment shall be wiped from your eyes because of my God. Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he? Terica had put her confidence in her Christ. Her Christ lets us know every now and then he loaned us these bodies of ours for a certain period of time. When it's time for these bodies of ours to go back to Mother Earth from whence they have came, God says, I have a new body. A new what? No more pain. No more sorrow. No more fears. It will all be howdy, howdy. Have a good body. If we're going to see her again, we got to make sure that we have made our peace with our God. Got to make sure that we have gotten our house in order. If your house is in order, we'll meet them in the air. We'll be with them forevermore. Believe with you, family. God wants your confidence. Confidence in him. Knowing that he will protect you. Knowing that his presence will be with you. I say to you that soon the calls are going to stop coming in. Cards will stop coming in the mail. Knocks on the door will stop. But God says, I will never stop. I'll be there forever. Amen. We have a closing song. and We'll call the morticians and they'll come.